Okay, hi everybody, it's Mr. Kemper, and this is our first video for AP Chemistry for South Anchorage High School uh, post-coronavirus situation. So hopefully you've had a chance to look at the intro video that I have out there on YouTube. Uh, today we're going to start um, with some of the new material that you have to know before the AP Chem exam. And again, uh, if you didn't see the introduction uh, video, the stuff I'm going to show you today you have not seen yet, but it will be on the AP Chem exam. There are some things that won't be on the AP exam that I've already covered, so make sure you look at that intro video and that will give you a little better uh, information. Okay, so today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, solubility. So if you remember way back in Chapter 4, um, we talked about solubility and I told you to just use the solubility rules black and white, either soluble or insoluble. Well, things are a little bit more complicated. Um, if you look at the, the little board behind me, uh, this is where they got those rules. If the solubility of a substance is less than 0.01 molar, then we generally consider that insoluble. If the solubility is between 0.1 molar and 0.01 molar, so intermediate solubility, we generally call that slightly soluble or marginally soluble, and that's what you saw in the table. And then if something is soluble, it doesn't mean it's infinitely soluble, it just means it's got a solubility greater than 0.1 molar. So those are the rules explained. Okay, We have to go into a little bit more detail because in truth everything is a little bit soluble. Even the table in front of you is soluble to a tiny, tiny degree. So let's um, play with something you may remember. Let's see if you can do it. How about PBI2? Is that soluble or insoluble based on the solubility rules? So you can stop the video and see if you can remember. Um, but some of you are saying, oh yeah, it is insoluble. It's one of the exceptions to the solubility rules for iodides. Iodides generally are soluble, but PBEI2 is one of the exceptions. It's not soluble. Okay? But that means that the solubility is less than 0.01 molar. So how soluble is it? That's what we're going to figure out today. So we're going to start out by looking at solubility as an equilibrium situation. So if something dissolves, that means it's going to, in this case, when it's an ionic substance, metal, nonmetal, it's going to break into ions. So let's show that dissociation. So a little tiny bit of PBI2 does dissolve, and it does break into ions. So let's look at that situation in a demonstration uh, that PBI2 is a little bit soluble, even though we call it insoluble. So in this flask, I've got some lead nitrate, okay, lead 2 nitrate. And in this big bottle, I've got some potassium iodide. So I'm going to mix the two. So I should be able to create a precipitate with the lead ions and the iodide ions in those two mixtures. And you see that I can. I can form a precipitate. So doesn't that say that it is insoluble? Very little of it does dissolve. And if I had some good distilled water, which I don't here at my house, um, you, would see, you should see it go clear, okay? But if I add enough of the two things, I'm going to get a very, very vivid precipitate that you're used to seeing when I mix lead ions and iodide ions. But I can add little bits of them, and a tiny bit of that lead iodide will dissolve. So again, it is an equilibrium situation. So. What I want to find out is what is the solubility of PBI2. So we're going to figure out how to do that using an equilibrium constant. So if I was to write an equilibrium constant expression for this, you guys can do that. So the equilibrium constant, K, is going to be equal to the concentration of lead ions times the concentration of iodine ions squared, right? Those are the two aqueous. And then, do I divide by the concentration of the solid? Of course not. You already know that. Solids don't appear in the equilibrium constant expression. 
So that is the equilibrium constant expression for the dissolving of PBI2. Now this is a different kind of equilibrium constant. It's not Ka for an acid, it's not Kb for a base, it's not Kp for a pressure. It is based on solubility. So we have a different subscript, and the subscript we use is Ksp, Sp for solubility product. So we can find what this value is from a table in the book. So if you look over here in the, uh, on the smaller whiteboard, if you find uh, your textbook, page 761, you will find values for these equilibrium constants. How well do they dissolve? And again, this is an equilibrium constant. So let's solve for the concentration of lead in the solution, and that will be the solubility of lead iodide. Okay? So that constant, if you look it up in your textbook, is 1.4 times 10 to the minus 8th. Okay? Tiny, tiny equilibrium constant, which means it doesn't go very far to the right, which means it doesn't dissolve very well, correct? And we know that because lead to iodide is generally insoluble. But again, a little bit will dissolve. So how do we figure out what that concentration is? Well, we're going to go back to ice tables. These are really easy ones. So let's make an ice table. So we're going to start out um, with just the ions. So we can we leave the solid out? Okay. And I don't have any of those ions to begin with. And as it proceeds to equilibrium, what is the change? Well, that's a 1, so this is going to be a plus x. The i minus is going to be a plus 2x, so that's going to be x, and that's going to be 2x. Okay? Now we will plug those values into the equilibrium constant expression, and we're going to have, and I'll rewrite this, so I'm going to have 1.4 times 10 to the minus 8th is equal to the concentration of lead ions, which is x, times the concentration of iodide ions, which is 2x, right? I'm taking the equilibrium column, and then I have to square that. So it seems like I'm double dipping. I'm using the 2 twice, but I'm following all the rules for equilibrium constant expression. I'm put, putting in the equilibrium concentration here for iodide ion, and then I have to square that concentration. So what it really comes out to be is 4x cubed is 1.4 times 10 to the minus 8th. So to solve for x, obviously just divide both sides by 4. Take the cubed root in your calculator, and you're going to find, if you're following along, x is 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. Okay? So x is the solubility. Okay? That is also the concentration of Pb plus 2 ions in, in the solution, and it is equal to the solubility of PbI2. Now, what would be the concentration of iodide ions in this solution? Well, it's going to be twice whatever X was, so the concentration of iodide ions is going to be 2 times 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3 molar, or about 3 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. Okay. So, what we've found is that we know the solubility of the substance, PBI2, we know what the concentration of lead ions is. It's the same as the solubility of PBI2. And the iodide ion concentration is twice as big. We would say that that solution is saturated, meaning I can't dissolve anymore. At that point, I've got both sides of the equation equaling the same thing, and we say that is a saturated solution. Okay, so what we found was that the solubility of PBI2 was equal to the concentration of lead 2 ions, and we found it was 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. So, uh, why do we worry about concentrations so small? It seems like that's really a very, very tiny concentration of lead to worry about. Uh, hey, Adil, could you put your phone away, please? Okay, thank you. Thomas, don't talk to him either. All right. Okay, so why do we worry about those concentrations that are so small? Well, the concentration of lead ions in drinking water must be less than 7.25 times 10 to the minus 8th molar. 
So that's what drinking water standards are. So that's why we've got to worry about such tiny concentrations. It seems almost something you could ignore, but when you're talking about food grade things and drinking water, concentrations of ions that are super tiny are very important. Okay? So let's look at one more example. And you guys kind of try it along with me, and you're going to need to go to your KSP table. So let's see if we can find the solubility of a different substance. And the substance I'm going to have is PB3PO42. Okay, so hopefully you know from your solubility rules that phosphates are insoluble, so that should be insoluble. But a little bit will dissolve. So how much will dissolve? So we want to know the solubility of that substance. What's different about this one is there's no subscripts that are only one. So how do we handle that? So first of all, always start with the solid breaking apart into the ions. So we'll start out with Pb3PO4,2 and breaking those into the ions are just simply how many of each ion we're going to create when that ionic substance dissolves. So we're going to get three Pb plus two ions and two PO4 minus three ions. Okay? So let's do the same thing we did before. Let's write the equilibrium constant expression. So we're going to have KSP is equal to the concentration of lead ions cubed times the concentration of phosphate ions squared. Okay? So we're trying to find out what the solubility is, so what we're really looking for here is X in the ice table. So let's first look up what the KSP value is. Hopefully you had a chance to look that up if you stopped the video. KSP for this substance is 1 times 10 to the minus 54th. Okay? So that is very, very insoluble as you would predict. So to figure out what to put in here, let's make an ice table just like before. So I have none of each of the ion before things dissolve and break apart. And now as I go to equilibrium, how are things going to change? Well, this time lead is going to be a plus 3x. And phosphate is going to be a plus 2x. And so this will be 3x at equilibrium and 2x at equilibrium. Okay? So let's plug those numbers in in the equilibrium column in the equilibrium constant expression. So we're going to have 3x. Then we have to cube that. Right? And for phosphate, it's 2x, and I have to square that. So I've got a little bit more complicated situation now. So 3x to the third and 2x squared, if I multiply everything together, I'm going to have 3 times 3 is 9, 9 times 3 is 27, so 27x cubed times 4x squared. And if I do a little bit more math, I think I'm going to get 108x to the fifth. And that's 1 times 10 to the negative 54th. Okay? So now I've got to solve for x, so I'll divide both sides by 108 and take the fifth root. So make sure you know how to do that in your calculator. Taking the fifth root is the same as raising the power to 0.2. Okay? So if I do that, x will turn out to be, let's see, 6.21 times 10 to the minus 12th. And remember, x is the solubility. Okay. Okay. So that's the solubility, and that's what we're trying to find. So if you wanted to find the concentration of each individual ion in this saturated solution, the concentration of lead ion is going to be three times. 6.21 times 10 to the minus 12th. And the concentration of phosphate ions is going to be 2 times 6.21 times 10 to the minus 12th. And when I did that, I get 1.86 times 10 to the minus 11th. And for the phosphate, I get 
1.24 times 10 to the minus 11th. Okay, so those are the concentrations of each individual ion in this saturated solution. So remember, it's going to keep dissolving until no more will dissolve. At that point, we say it's a saturated solution. Okay, so just one more thing to cover. Um, then we'll be done with this first video on chapter 16, and that is how do we go the other direction? How about instead of me giving you KSP and you finding the solubility, X, how about if I give you what the solubility is, can you calculate KSP? So we're going to do a problem like that. So this time I'm going to give you the solubility of cobalt 3 hydroxide and I want to know what's KSP. So again, this is going to be a molarity. Okay, so that's the solubility. We can figure out how much will dissolve. Now what is KSP? I'm going to do the same situation. Let's write the substance breaking down in water. Write an equilibrium constant expression. Okay, so what I need to find out is what are these things at equilibrium, and I can calculate KSP. So how do I find things at equilibrium, concentrations at equilibrium? I gotta make an ice table. So again, at the beginning, I have nothing of those ions, so there's zero for both. And the way things are going to change, this is going to be a plus x, this will be a 3x. So I've got x and 3x. Okay. So it seems like I've got a couple of unknowns. I've got Ksp, which I'm trying to find. I've got x, which is usually an unknown. But this time, remember, I told you the solubility. And the solubility is x. Okay, so we're just going to plug that number in for x in both cases. So this one's going to be 9.81 times 10 to the minus 12th molar. And then 3 times that will be 2.94 times 10 to the minus 11th. So I'm going to plug those numbers in for those concentrations. So I'm going to have 9.81 times 10 to the minus 12th, and then hydroxide is 2.94 times 10 to the minus 11th, and that's going to be cubed. Don't forget the cubed. And then when I do the math here, I'm going to come up with 2.5 times 10 to the minus 43. And that's the value of KSP. Okay. So you should be able to take a KSP value, find the solubility, and then if I give you the solubility, you should be able to find KSP. So I will link the homework to the YouTube video in your book. There's about four or five problems. You can also find it on my website. So good luck, and uh, this video is brought to you by uh, Raid Shadow Legends. Hope you have a good day. Bye-bye.